Welcome back to Swine Web's Swine TV. I'm your host, Jim Eady. Pig Perspectives, exploring swine insights with Dr. Jeff Bergerman from Zoetis Animal Health Canada. Welcome to the program, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Some great things happening for Zoetis. Uh, you've got a great background in the swine industry. Recently joining the Zoetis team, Jeff, uh, can you give me an introduction about yourself and passion for the swine industry? Yeah, so it's uh, a bit of a story just on how I all got here, but uh, I'm originally from Humboldt, uh, and Humboldt is kind of a, an area, at least when I was growing up, there was a lot of swine production in the area. Uh, it's the home of Big Sky Farms, and there was another large producer, Stomp Pork Farms at the time. Um, we're kind of both in this, this area. Um, shortly after high school, I wasn't decided with what I was going to do. So I had, I had worked some odd jobs and then I had ended up working in a, a 5,000 sow uh, farm as a breeding technician for a couple of months, kind of before I decided to go to university and, and pursue a, a career in agriculture. And, uh, First of all, I did a degree in agriculture at the U of S, uh, majoring in animal science. And then after I completed my degree there, I kind of, I really liked the idea of veterinary medicine and just the more, the more classes I had taken that were medicine related, the more interest I had kind of stoked up in that. Um, so after that, I decided to go to apply to the Western College of Veterinary Medicine and, and uh, once accepted, kind of uh, went down that avenue for a while and, and did my, my vet degree there. And kind of in my fourth or third, I guess, year of, of vet college, um, we kind of were able to start choosing some electives that we, we like to do. And I kind of figured if I ever wanted to be a veterinarian at home, around Humboldt area that having um, some swine knowledge would be good to have in my pocket. So I, I did do the swine elective and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And then kind of, it did another uh, swine rotation um, with that and kind of the rest is history, I guess. I, once I got out into the vet world and practicing, I, I did mixed practice for a year and then opportunity came to come in the swine field and I've been in there and uh, here I am. So. so let's backtrack a little bit, Jeff. So Saskatchewan is where you're from. You're enamored with some of the big pork powerhouses. Um, is that how your passion started is just being around it or was it something else? Yeah, I mean, ever since I was a small child, I really, really enjoyed agriculture and farming. Um, my, our family is kind of grown up in that type of industry, although my parents don't farm. Uh, my brother and I farm now, and, and I really enjoy farming and farming industry, and just kind of naturally gravitated towards that, the agriculture degree, the um, while I was doing agriculture, I kind of was introduced to Dr. Phil Thacker. He was a swine nutritionist there, and he knew I was from Humboldt and knew I knew all the pork producers out there. So he kind of took me under his wing and tried to get me to, you know, be interested in swine. And, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of just partially how I kind of naturally gravitated towards that. So why swine over other species like cattle or poultry? Good question. Um, I mean, it. I think they're just fascinating on, on multiple levels. Like there's so many interesting things that happen in the swine farms and the swine barns. There's, it's such a big population of animals, really, when you think of it. And it's, it's actually quite amazing what all happens in the farms. Um, a lot of people think uh, a farmer is somebody wearing bibbed overalls, 
you know, carrying a chop pail beside him. And uh, these farms nowadays are just nothing like that. It's, it's business, it's production, it's kind of a blend of efficiencies. It's a lot of things going on. And it, I mean, it's kind of exciting and it's kind of a, a good thing to be a part of. So. Now we're going to get into your role at Zoetis, but first let's talk about your background with Oli Sky. Yeah. Um, so it all kind of started with uh, a maternity leave position. Uh, so I was hired temporarily uh, for maternity leave. And uh, that would have been in 2013, I believe. Uh, so yeah, I kind of started with a maternity leave position. I got to come to my hometown. Um, that was exciting. I, my family's here. Uh, I like Humboldt. I like being home. So it was a really good fit. And uh I mean, while, while I was there, I got to see some really interesting things. I got to see kind of new diseases roll out in the industry, things that, you know, nobody knew much about, right? So it was really, that part was really fascinating and really kind of spoke to me. You know, I, I, I found it really interesting, some of those, you know, new diseases that are coming to a head, so... And why the timing now with Zoetis and how are you helping customers, Jeff? Uh, good question. Yeah. I mean, it was time. I felt like it was time for a change. Um, I needed to, to, uh, to just try something different. So I ended up doing just a mixed practice for a while again, um, just to, to see, you know, what was available and what was out there. And, uh, one of my friends actually sent me the job posting that Zoetis had and uh, said, well, you should apply for it. You'd be the perfect fit for it. And I kind of thought, well, it was always something I thought would maybe be a good fit for me and, and for what I like to do. I, I like working with producers. I like working with veterinarians. Um, I like learning new stuff and, and, it was, I think, a really, really good fit. So, I mean, that's kind of why I gravitated towards the job. Um, and yeah, I just figured it was something I, I'd really like to try and, and see, so. Well, we're, we're happy that, that you're at Solatus. Now let's get to some technical stuff. What's some buzz around Circle Virus? Yeah, so I mean, Circle virus is, is again, kind of one of those fascinating diseases. And anyone that's known me long enough knows that I kind of am always been really interested in circle virus. Um, some of the very first circle virus information came out of hog farms in the Humboldt area. So, I mean, it was kind of here where some of that stuff was discovered. So that part of it is kind of interesting. And, and even just, uh, seeing how the virus is evolving, how it's changing, how it responds to vaccines. Um, you know, it kind of all started out with circle virus and, and now there's new strains. So there's circle virus type three, there's circle virus type four. There's just so much information that's kind of coming to head. Um, it's really, I find it really, really interesting just seeing how it's all working and how it's all, you know, how, how these diseases are integrating and, you know, we'll put in an intervention and they kind of find a way around that intervention to skirt out um, and change. So there's lots of discussion kind of in the last probably year, I would say. Um, and it just, the more you kind of keep your ear to the industry, the more you kind of hear that, you know, practitioners are saying something has changed with circle virus. Um, there was a recent report that the Canadian Swine Health Information Network put out um, and double double the, the normal response uh, in the circle virus area was kind of mentioned. Uh, so there is people seeing changes with circle virus. 
And uh, I mean, it it is uh, really a fascinating disease, despite the fact that it's been, you know, researched for 25 years and it's kind of been known for that long. There's there's still a lot of unas- unanswered questions, I guess I would say, and and still a lot of learning that's happening in that facet. So. Can you emphasize the significance of preventative care on your end, Jeff? Yeah. So, I mean, preventative care is is very important uh, just from an investment standpoint. Um, you know, I, I mean, if we think about circovirus, for example, uh, the return on investment for a circovirus vaccine is is to the point where that nobody doesn't use a circovirus vaccine essentially. So, you know, there's no real great effective treatment for circovirus, but we're really able to prevent the disease from, from having clinical significance or from having clinical signs uh, with prevention. So anytime you can prevent something from happening, it's just you're ahead of the curve by preventing it, I would say, than by trying to treat it, you know. I feel like when you're trying to treat something, you're kind of behind the ball and you're trying to catch up to, to what you're, what you're after. So. So with uh, regular, it encourages regular health checks, vaccination protocols and early illness detection. Yeah. I mean, all of those things are really important. Uh, One thing I would say that's really, really important again, is just working with your herd health veterinarian. Um, I mean, when we're a producer, or if you are a producer, you're in your barn all the time and what you see around you is normal to you and, and you're just used to seeing that, but there's other professionals that are in bar, all different barns all the time, seeing different things and just having them come into your farm and see something, you know, maybe they have a different insight into what, what you're seeing. Uh, maybe they see something that you're not seeing. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe you can pitch the question to them and they can help you, help you with that problem. I mean, there's, I think that's a really, really important part of the whole equation that we're, we're, uh, we're working with here. So. So you've got preventative care, and then there's the importance of sow herd care. Um, is it the same? Is it different? I, I would say kind of the same, but different. <laughs> um, I mean, the sow herd, I feel the sow herd is the engine that kind of drives the machine, right? So, you know, you want to take good care of the engine to make sure that you get long life and you get good productivity out of it. So. Uh, just making sure that, you know, just your basic everyday things are, are taken care of, making sure that, that the stockmen that are working on the farm are observant. Um, I mean, they're the people that see the problems. They're the people that, that have an idea what's going on. It's, I think just having good observant stock people is such an important part uh, of success on a farm. I mean, that's a, a, I think a really important part of, of what happens. I mean, we work with the stock people, um, you know, trying to, trying to help them out in whatever areas and facets that we can. Um, so, yeah. And what is new and exciting in the world of veterinary medicine, Jeff? Um, there's a lot of things I think that are new and exciting. Um, even just in the short amount of time, I say short, maybe relatively of my career of, you know, that 12 years or 11, it's actually 13 years I've been a veterinarian now. Uh, so in the time that I've been a veterinarian, uh, just changes in diagnostics, for example, it's gone from certain, you know, limited amount of tests to an expansion of the the number of tests we have and the different type of tests that we have. So, I mean, for example, we're doing whole genome sequencing on viruses. We're doing 
next generation sequencing on samples. Um, I mean, it's some of that stuff is still quite new and we're trying to figure out exactly how to interpret these results because I mean, you, you're trying to comb through what's significant, what's not significant, um, you know? So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of interesting things in that regard, just even with diagnostics, but I mean, from the disease side too, we're seeing changes in disease. We're seeing new diseases, um, new discoveries, um, you know, it that part I think is really interesting and just, that part I think is, is, you know, maybe even fascinating, just how, how diseases are changing, how they're adapting. Um, you know, like we'll see something like strep, streps, you know, zoo epidemicus, strep equi zoo epidemicus come into a sow herd and just completely have major mortality issues on the sows. Well, how come it doesn't affect the piglets? Well, how come the sows are affected? You know, how did it get here? How do we, you know, how do we manage it? How do we deal with it? I mean, there's, there's a lot of new and interesting things happening. And even just some of the, the tests that we have available now that we didn't have years ago have allowed us to find insights into, you know, how did this come to be? What are, what are we seeing here? So, I mean, I think, I think there is just some really, really good information uh, coming down the pipeline and, and just, I mean, it, I think it's really quite interesting how, how that kind of stuff is changing. And I mean, veterinary medicine has been changing for a long time and it will continue to change. And it, I, I think that is, is really, really interesting. So. Well, well said, Jeff, let's close on this. What is your best piece of veterinary advice? I think my my best piece of advice would try to be a lifetime learner. So um, it's something that I try to adhere to and I try to always have an open mind and, and realize that there's probably a lot of factors at play. Maybe some we know, maybe some we don't know. Um, if you're open to open to learning, I feel like it's a really, really great way of expanding your knowledge base and, and finding, you know, finding some of the things that are day to day jobs really quite interesting, and, and keeping a person engaged and keeping a person interested in, in what we do. So well, this was a great conversation, Dr. Jeff Bergerman from Zoetis Canada. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.